Howdy folks, Tex Grabner here with Tex Grabner Outdoors, new videos every Saturday, so if you don't want to miss out on your Tex Grabner Outdoors Saturday morning cartoon awesomeness, make sure to click subscribe and check my channel every Saturday for new videos. I love reading your comments and I really do appreciate all of you that watch. So, I actually forgot to turn the camera on when I started this video, so you missed a couple of steps that I can't put back together. Anyways, the point of this video is to actually show you how to build a tactical assault back quiver or a molly compatible quiver and so on for hunting. So first of all you're gonna need a molly shotgun scabbard from Condor. Me personally I'm not a fan of Condor gear. I think that it sucks. If you want good tactical gear, original special operations equipment is what you want to buy. But because we're just making kind of a LARP piece here, it doesn't really matter because this is going to be easy enough to put together. But this is a Condor Molly shotgun scabbard. Also, I have two of these 6x6 six Condor utility pouches, Alice belt, a quiver strip, and of course an Alice harness. You're also going to need some braided fishing line, belt punch, a blade, needle nose pliers, and of course needles. You're also going to need a piece of broadhead foam so that you can have something to stick down here with a broom handle and ramrod it down the quiver after you trim it to size. So far as you can see, I have in fact already cut all the hardware off of this back quiver or off of this shotgun scabbard because we don't want to have any rattle because this is in fact a potentially functional hunting back quiver. So we've got all the hardware cut off of here and I've already woven these molly pouches on here. I have also already stuffed my broadhead foam block down into the bottom here. As you can see it's compressed Make sure that if you're going to do this, you do not put this broadhead foam down inside of here if you ever want to use this thing for anything but a quiver. Because you will never, ever get that back up out of there. Going to take the quiver fingers here that we're going to lock our arrows in and just going to slice off five of them just like that and now I need my belt punch because we're gonna punch some holes in here right along the back right like this give it a good twist on both sides of that so we can run our needle through eventually. And so we're just going to punch these out. Now this shotgun scabbard is lined with Kydex so it will be safe for broadheads but a back quiver does not lend itself very well to use with anything but two blade fixed blade broadheads. You don't want to be using three blade broadheads in this or they'll probably hang up. But if you've got them separated in your foam, you might be alright. 
So we've got them all punched out on this side. Now we're going to find our hole on the other side and re-punch it through. So we've got that punched out. Now ideally we want this in here just like this. All I'm doing here is trimming this up so that it'll fit in here nice and flush. So now that I've got this trimmed to size, we're going to take our belt punch here. Now as you can see, there's this border here around the top of the scabbard mouth. So we only really need to punch holes to push our needle through on the bottom side of this rubber. You get the idea, it's a little bit hard to film this from that angle. Now we got our thread. And we need our needle. Thread your needle and then tie a big old knot on one end of it. So I've got this thing folded about in half now so that you can kind of see what I'm doing. First step is go through the top border on the mouth of the scabbard and then bring your needle back through your thread and draw that down tight and then run your needle on through your rubber piece here just like that. Also as I've said it's handy to have a pair of pliers. So now I'm just going to grab that and pull it on through.
go through the shotgun scabbard through that hole that I punched in the kydex now come back through the top Pull that down tight. And then go through our next hole in the kydex. Then push it down through our rubber here. Pull that tight, and then go back through the same hole in the kydex. And cinch that down tight. Then go through the next hole in the rubber. And the next hole in the kydex. and go through the same rubber hole a second time as you can see I'm keeping the slack out of it by holding it back then find your next hole that we punched in the kydex And go through there then through the rubber again and through the same hole that we did the last time Cinch that down, then go to the next hole in the rubber, find the same hole in the kydex, nope, next hole in the kydex. So what I'm going to do is, I'm just literally going to push that up through and pull it tight and then run it through another stitch that I made and pull that tight. Slice that off, and now I'm going to have to tie a knot in it so that it won't come undone. Just tying a normal square knot in here. Most complicated part of this is already done. We've got our arrow fingers stitched in. We've got our broadhead foam ramrodded all the way down to the bottom, which you didn't get to see because I forgot to turn on the camera. Now we're going to take our Alice harness here. And we're going to run this down underneath the molly on this shotgun scabbard.
And in this case, I'm going to pull it down to where the back buckle here is out. Now I'm going to do that with the other side as well. Trust me, you can work a computer. I'm sure you can figure this out. If I can do it, you can do it. So now on this other side, I'm going to run it down under the molly. until the buckle comes out. Right like this. And now, we're just going to molly weave all the way down to the end, or you can just literally run it cleared through all the way down to the end underneath so that's that side done out here so we're almost done now we need our Alice belt of the correct size Gonna take this and pop our Alice clip. Run it through our Alice belt. And then give this a good crimp with our pliers on the end here so that it won't actually come loose. Now we're going to take our other shoulder strap bring it around crimp that again figure out where the two back parts are on our belt here so we're gonna go one off on each side from the center point
and crimp that again. Now, for all practical purposes, this is together. So we've got our 6x6 six six pouches here on the back of the back quiver. We're weaved through the molly. We've got our arrow fingers in and we've got our broad head block in. Now, depending on your arrow length, you may need to actually use two broad head blocks before you actually put in your fingers to make sure that your arrows are the proper height. Again, common sense dictates that two blade or I guess single blade cut on contact broadheads are what work best in a back quiver. So the next time you go to a 3D shoot, you can do it with some badass swag. So now I'm going to demo this for you with broadheads in it. Quick tip for doing this with broadheads. First of all, you want your fingers on the side that's away from your back and you want to load long ways. with the quiver slot. Clip in. Long ways again. Just like that. Unclip. Lift straight out. Unclip. Lift straight out. Unclip, lift straight out, like I say you don't want to be loading this thing up with broadheads but it will at least definitely hold four. To be completely honest a block of broadhead foam in the bottom is probably good enough. You don't really even need to put these quiver fingers in here. It is super easy to do as long as you've got a little bit of know-how where there's a will, there's a way. I hope you guys enjoyed watching. I hope this video has been helpful to you. As always, God bless all my sports of America. Join the NRA to protect our rights. Just got my friends over at SOETacticalGear.com. Thank you very much to those of you involved in law enforcement and those of you serving in the military. And thanks for watching. Tech Scrabner Outdoors.